Hey guys, and uh, welcome to this introductory video uh, for this new channel I'm doing called Many Motion. To just quickly introduce myself, my name is Oliver Cook. I'm a third year university student at Staffordshire University studying games design. And uh, primarily this channel is more um, of a video kind of blog kind of documentation thing for, uh, for my dissertation. But I'm going to be attempting to kind of um, edit them in a way where I can put them onto YouTube so anyone can view them and anyone can get information out of them. I'll go into what my dissertation is in a second, but to briefly go through my first two years of university, um, I did a lot of 3D modeling stuff, uh, did a lot of engines, worked with like UDK. Um, but one of the things that really stuck out to me and one of the things I really enjoyed doing was motion capture. The motion capture stuff I did in my first and second years was done using the Staffordshire University's Viacon system which is a great system, it taught me a lot about Motion Builder, cleaning up data, and it kind of got my foot into learning what motion capture was really about, not from just the actual performance and cleanup um, standpoint, but from a preparation standpoint and preparing your shot lists and stuff like that and uh, preparing your actor properly, having a director there at all times in order to read off that shot list and kind of say, all right, well, we should be doing this now. So it was coming up to the end of my second year that I'd finished off my second motion capture um, project uh, for university and I started looking into motion capture a little bit more on the internet and I started seeing that some people were doing great things with the connect and trying to do motion detection with that because in essence duh but you know the connect does pick up a skeleton um, so if there's any way of picking up that uh, skeletal data and putting it into an FBX surely it would work as a motion capture system uh, I think the first ever attempts at motion capture using um, the Kinect was from a company called Breckel, um, who streamed it directly into Motion Builder. Uh, and the results were, you know, it was early days, basically. It was early days for, for motion, markless motion capture, as it were. Um, but the idea that you could just go and get a connect, sit it down, and just get motion capture data it was something that just, that it, it grabbed me by the throat, basically. I was like, I want to learn more about this. This this seems amazing. Um, and looking a little bit further into it, uh, I noticed that some people were also um, basically creating 3D models using the connect, like placing an item in front of the connect, and then, um, creating a 3D model um, based on the depth perception that it got from it, as well as applying the texture to it, and I thought that was really cool. So by the end of my second year, I can remember sending off an email to a lecturer, loosely hypothesizing that um, in the future we may not need kind of like uh, like high poly sculpt models, well we will always need them because not everything is real world, but the idea that you could get an item and just stick it in front of a connect, click a button and it would create a mesh for you that you could either then turn into a low poly mesh or it would optimize itself. Um, so that was my hypothesis at the time and I said then that I wanted to do uh, a dissertation on uh, markerless motion capture. And at the time, it, it was very early days, but at the time, this, this was about two years ago now, yeah, about two years ago. At the time, it was very early days. The results that were online were pretty... Some, some of them were really good. Some of them were a bit hit and miss. So uh, at, the, at that time, I was told that it might not be a great idea because, you know, it doesn't look like it's kind of all there yet. So I didn't know what to do for my dissertation that year. Um, and thankfully, I ended up taking a year out in order to start up uh, a very small independent company. Uh, with a couple of people from university. Uh, the company was called Lurum Studios and we started work on a game called Ascension Arenas of War. Now Ascension Arenas of War um, was, if we boil it down to its very core, it was an FPS and every single character was bipedal. Um, now I was alright with hand animation, um, I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm adequate at hand animation let's say, uh, but when it came round to looking at the animations uh, for this, we considered going into the university's mocap system with Viacom. We considered hand animation. And then I brought to the table that 
I was considering looking into markless motion capture and seeing if it was a viable option for us to do. Uh, so with a lot of research, uh, we finally found IPI soft or IPI soft. I don't know how they want people to say it. It's an I with a pi symbol next to it, but it's always spelled IPI, obviously. So I'm for the for the duration of this video, I will be calling it IPI soft because that's what I've always called it. Um, so we found IPI soft anyway, and you know looked at the equipment, kind of weighed up, you know what it what it may be able to do, what it might not be able to do, um, and to kind of solidify the um, to solidify the idea of using this system. Uh, I downloaded the uh, the tutorial file of the guy just standing there and walking left and right, and actually rigged that up and everything and kind of like tracked the animation. And if you could see the smile on my face, it was ridiculous. I was just like, oh my god, it works! Like this is amazing! Like I I totally want to do this. So I ended up buying like four PlayStation eyes, um, a lot of kind of uh, stands, tripods, uh, active USB cables. I ended up buying like the whole shebang for wanting to do this. And we went into the mocap studio at university still just because of the space that we've got there. And uh, yeah, we did our shoot. And I can remember the second record was hit and we had to do that calibration video with the mag light. The second the record button was hit, I can remember thinking, I've wasted everyone's time and this is totally not gonna work. I just don't see how this can work. Um, so we did the, the calibration video and we did all the motions and whatnot and we came back with like something ridiculous like 18 or 20, 25 gig of data. It, no, it might have actually been 30 gig of video data. And I think at the time we were recording at 40 hertz. It was back on the old IPI recorder where I don't know if you could change the settings or not. Uh, but yeah, I was very green at that point, never used it before. So we just kind of went in, tested it and tried to get things working. And we got back to the office, I started messing with the data, and lo and behold it worked, and we ended up putting it into the game. And the animations were fine, they were brilliant for like a low budget, um, bipedal solution. Um, it was a really quick turnaround once we'd actually started getting it. The cleanup, um, the cleanup was mostly done within IPI, um, but we did go into Max, and we did uh, do the looping animations there and whatnot, but that's what you'd have to do anyway with any um, mocap data, be it in Motion Builder, uh, or be it any markless solution or anything like that. If you're working with C3D data, you've got to clean all that up in Motion Builder, get your skeleton on and then export it as FBX, so you can do your looping animations anyway. So the pipeline wasn't really that different, it was just... Um, it was just not using the Viacom system, basically. It was, it was setting up cameras. And, um, to a degree there's a little less precision or we found there was a little less precision but for the cost that you're paying for it didn't really matter so that brings me on to what this channel is going to be uh, all about uh, I decided to go with the name many motion um, for a couple of reasons one because I want I want to test out and uh, explore lots of different motion capture solutions uh, for independent studios and I'll get into my dissertation title in a minute but I want to explore not just bipedal animation, like I really want to explore facial animation as well. I want to explore different types of bipedal animation, so um, I've seen some really good stuff with people using IPI to um, create animations for a T-Rex. And also comparing different products that will do it. There's a lot of different facial uh, recognition companies that will that, that give out like free demos and whatnot of this stuff, um, and there's also a lot of bipedal um, bipedal products as well that will, will do markless motion capture. Um, so I'm intending to explore all of these different avenues and, and have a comparison of, of all of these things and see which is the, kind of the best route to go down. The title of my dissertation is uh, Exploring Markless Motion Capture Solutions for Independent Developers. There you go. Um, so hopefully over the course of these videos we'll be able to figure out what that actually does mean. I've already had a bit of email correspondence with a couple of people in the industry and they've come back with some brilliant ideas that I never would have thought of. I mean, obviously my initial walk-in was like, oh, so if anyone independent like we wanted to needed bipedal animation and wanted to do it mocap and weren't, weren't maybe best skilled at hand animation, they could just about clean up stuff. Maybe this is a great solution if they've got space or if they can acquire space for a day. 
uh, I've had people in the industry say that uh, this would be a really good idea for prototyping animations, which I never even thought of. Um, so, you know, we've got this character. We don't want to go straight into the mocap studio yet because we don't want to, you know, maybe these animations aren't, aren't going to be the ones that we need. They can set this up, um, use it very quickly, get some prototype animations, and potentially these could even be the base um, animations for the mocap motion capture studio to work off. Or even the video that you're capturing could be something that the motion capture studio could work off. Um, the great thing about doing it in a prototype sense like that is you've still got creative control at that point. Now I'm not saying that if you go into a motion capture studio, you know, you put your hands up like this and just let them get on with it and then just accept whatever data comes out because you're paying for a service, obviously. But when you go into a motion capture studio, you are paying for your t their time, basically. So you can't really dilly-dally about and you can't mess people about. If you get your capture done in a day, that's, that's good. <laughs> you don't want to spend more money than you, you, you really need to. Um, so yeah, uh, using it in a prototype sense, you could spend a week, two weeks or whatever, just kind of every now and again going back in and being like, well, wouldn't it be cool if I carried to walk like this? Or wouldn't it be cool if I carried to walk like this? Or whatever. And just being able to test all that stuff out and just have fun with testing out and seeing what works best. So then if you do go into the motion capture studio at a later point, you can say, right, we had this video, uh, you know, this is what we've originally been working with prototype wise. Let's do something like this because we really liked how this turned out. So yeah, I kind of rambled on a little bit there about uh, what this could be used for. But uh, to summarize, this channel is going to be uh, the journey going into looking at different motion capture solutions, uh, looking at um, comparisons between the two, best practices as well for for different pieces of software and stuff like that. It's worth noting that the next couple of videos that I'm going to be doing are going to be um, strictly on IPI soft entirely because I've got a lot of test data already um, from a test I did last week that I've wanted to kind of get in a video format and clean up and, and get going. Um, so expect those videos uh, soon. Uh, and yeah, if you like what you're hearing, think you'd be interested, um, you know where to find me. So until next time, guys. two hand salutes.